Hey everybody, this is Darren Van Dam, and you are watching Flick Connection, the show that helps you get more out of movies. And today I want to tell you about some of the most underrated horror movies you can currently watch on Netflix. So I am back in the studio. I had initially tried to film this somewhere else. It did not go well, but there is sort of an outtake reel available for channel members. If you're a channel member, go check it out. If you're not, there's a join button below. But this list is gonna contain 20 underrated horror movies, ones that are not necessarily good, especially on the back end of the list, but that just deserve a second look. And then as we get closer to number one, there's some real gems on here that just didn't get the credit they deserved when they were released and still haven't to this day, in my opinion. This video is sponsored by CyberGhost VPN, and I'll tell you more about how you can access more movies with Netflix using them later in this video. But let's go ahead and start with my number 20 pick, The Chernobyl Diaries. Now this is kind of known to be not a good movie. There was a little bit of hype around it, not a lot, but it had some of the creators behind Paranormal Activity doing this sort of bigger budget horror movie just a few years later. The thing I like about this is the concept. It's about a group of what are known as extreme tourists. They decide to go tour Chernobyl, which is actually something that you can do. I don't know that it's always legal. They're definitely not doing it legally in the movie. And they run into some weird things happening in this radioactive wasteland that is Chernobyl. Now to frame it, I did not expect this to be good because it got horrific reviews, but I was curious, so I watched it anyway some years after it was released. And I was pleasantly surprised by how kind of weird this one got. It didn't stay super grounded, which I liked. The problem I really had with it was once it really starts to take off and once I really started to enjoy it, it's pretty much over with at that point. I would have liked had it taken off faster and had it kept going. This could have been a real gem. There's something here. It just didn't quite work for me in the end, but that's why it's all the way back at number 20. If you passed on it for a long time, it may be worth a second look. Sarah Winchester is the majority shareholder of the Winchester Repeating Arms Company. You want to take it away from her? We're worried about her sanity, Dr. Price. Winchester just recently got added to Netflix. It's one of the newer movies on this particular list. I liked it enough, but I can see why a lot of people didn't like it. However, I also like the work from the directors. They've done some movies I've really enjoyed in the past. Winchester, not quite one of them. And what I think may have happened here is because they got Helen Mirren involved, the studio decided, nope, let's make this PG-13, let's market the shit out of it, and basically ended up with kind of a turd of a movie. However, because I liked the director's previous work, I could see what they were maybe trying to do. This definitely should have been rated R, it should have been gorier, and it also sort of tricks you into thinking it's gonna be sort of this highbrow horror movie because it's a period piece, it takes place in the, the old Winchester mansion, but then it's got these weird elements and so I was excited throughout, really waiting for it to turn into something like Drag Me to Hell. It ultimately never does, but it does have a great look to it and it's a little wilder than I had expected it to be, which I think is kind of why it didn't work. But if you just like the look of it and you're interested in the Winchester sort of horror story, this is a decent watch, just keep in mind it's number 19. Now my next pick is definitely one that is not for everybody. I've talked about it several times on the channel before. It's The Green Inferno, directed by Eli Roth. Now this is sort of an homage to an old, super gory movie called Cannibal Holocaust. And Eli Roth movies feel kind of like student movies. They're weird, the acting is kind of all over the place, meaning he's always got a couple of really strong performances next to really weak ones, it's odd. But it's part of the flavor of his style. And I like it enough, there are some people that absolutely love it. They get into his movies, they get what they're about, and they love them, and then a lot of people just don't quite get what he's trying to do, and it just doesn't work for them, and I totally get that as well. If you wanna watch something just weird and gory and dark and grim, this is about a group of activists that go to the Amazon 
get captured by cannibals. Everything that happens from that point forward is awful. And that works for some folks. I found the movie to be pretty enjoyable and pretty well done, but it's hard for me to recommend it strongly. Now, keeping in mind these are underrated movies, there are several movies on this list that are just terrible movies. Shark Night is easily the worst movie on the list by far, but watching it with the right expectations, it can be a lot of fun. This is a really stupid movie about a bunch of teenagers just getting gobbled up by sharks all night. That's all it is. If you want to have some fun with it, nothing about this movie is realistic. The habitat the sharks live in is not realistic. The way the sharks behave is not realistic. The way people die is not realistic. But it can be very fun to watch. If you're trying to take this movie seriously, I promise you you're doing it wrong. But if you just want to watch, again, some teenagers get gobbled up by sharks, Shark Night has some fun little shocks and surprises in it that kind of keep you engaged. It's a fun movie that's currently on Netflix that unfortunately not enough people have watched and enjoyed. Raise that trophy over your head, but not like you're victorious, like you're gonna smash it on top of her. Sally, stop smiling. Stop smiling. Good. Now, Emily is one about a babysitter who does terrible things to the children, and this one is almost too dark. Now this one's underrated just because a lot of people don't know about it and it is weird in the sense that it's not the typical type of horror movie that you're going to see, yet it does feel fairly real, which again is kind of why it's a little too dark. If you're someone that normally leaves your kids with a babysitter, this is going to disturb you down to your bones. If you're not, if you don't even have kids, uh, I don't know how this one's going to go about scaring you, but it is fairly disturbing. This babysitter comes in and doesn't necessarily physically abuse the children, but definitely psychologically terrifies these kids, and it is grim stuff. And you may be thinking, like, why would I want to watch that? And a lot of you are probably correct, this movie's not for you. But the lead actress in this does a killer job portraying this monster of a babysitter. There's a dark backstory that unfolds. So there's quite a bit of meat on the bone with this movie. If you're interested in the concept and you want to see kind of how the delivery plays out, I think it's fairly well delivered. It's just a subject matter that's not really for everybody. Don't Be Afraid of the Dark is a horror movie that was produced by Guillermo del Toro and it had a lot of buildup. This is another one like Winchester that got a huge marketing budget. It was everywhere, people were excited for it. And then it came out and it just kind of fell flat. That said, if this is the type of movie that you just discover at midnight while you're flipping through the channels, which is something none of us really do anymore, you'd be pleasantly surprised by this one. I feel like this was maybe the first movie, or at least the first big movie that Katie Holmes was in after she was married to Tom Cruise. That's not the reason to watch the movie, I could care less about her, but it's about these little creatures that are really pretty terrifying. This one's fairly mild on the scare level, but on the creep factor, it's pretty damn good. I, I enjoyed the look of this one. It's got a Guillermo del Toro feel without his like expert delivery in the storytelling. However, the storytelling is not terrible either. The doctor will be along shortly. You have my word, you won't be harmed. Stonehurst Asylum is based on a short story by Edgar Allan Poe, and I think it's a pretty fantastic adaptation of Poe's work. It feels like Edgar Allan Poe. It's dripping with that gothic feel. I love that aspect of it. In addition to that, it's got an amazing cast. It's got Kate Beckinsale, Ben Kingsley, Michael Caine, Brendan Gleeson. It's fantastic in terms of the cast. The reason this one's underrated and underappreciated is because it doesn't quite live up to the sum of all of its parts. With that cast, great production design, meaning the look of the film, the costumes, the sets, all of that, and Edgar Allan Poe's fantastic story, with it starting off with all of that, it never really gets moving the way that you think that it should. However, going into it with tempered expectations, 
I think a lot of you will really be surprised by this one. However, it is gonna feel familiar because other things have been adapted from Poe's work. So it's gonna feel almost like a ripoff of some maybe a couple other movies that you like. However, the Edgar Allan Poe story came first and this is a pretty faithful adaptation of it. Eli is the first Netflix original on this list. I found this to be a really effective horror movie. Now, it's not one of my favorites that Netflix has put out, but it's certainly one that's been overlooked. It's got a really great creep factor. You do have to overlook quite a few things, like the fact that it's about a boy who has his autoimmune disorder, who is sent to this specialty hospital that's basically built in an old house, which is the worst place to go if you're allergic to every germ on the planet. However, you get past that major hump, and this one is just creepy throughout. There's a lot of jump scares in it, which are not my favorite way to get scared by a movie, but they just kind of keep coming. I was surprised at how many effects and how many sequences there were in this movie that were pretty scary. Normally there's a handful and it's just a lot of walking around in a dark house with movies like this, but not with Eli. Every sequence had something to it that surprised me, and I liked that. Ultimately, did I like the way the movie ended up? I didn't love it, but I also didn't hate it, which is why it gets put right here in the middle of the list. Now, with the final two on my bottom 10, we really jump up to some pretty good recommendations, meaning these are not movies I would consider to be bad that are worth a second look. These are movies that are surprisingly good and just, for whatever reason, they're underwatched and underappreciated. The first one on my list is Dark Skies. This was also recently added to Netflix. And the cool thing about this one is, while it is sort of a big budget horror movie that came out in theaters and a lot of people saw, it was very different because it focuses on this sort of alien aspect that may or may not actually be happening. I'm not going to give away any spoilers, but that's how they sell the movies, that it's about aliens. I found it to be super creepy. There's some great sequences in this that are just different than anything else. There's a great element to this family that kind of can't get people to believe them because, again, they're, tr they're talking about aliens. And that's just a subject matter not done well in horror movies very often. Often when it is done, it's lower budget movies that it just never quite delivers because the effects never work. They work here, it's effective, and really, really creepy. And then the last one on my bottom 10 is called Under the Shadow. This is actually foreign language, and it's from Iran. This actually takes place during the Iraq-Iran War. And it really centers on this mother left alone with her child in this apartment. There's these bombings that are happening. It's kind of part of the daily routine. And with this movie, you get two things. You get the spooky factor of the horror movie with these weird visions and things happening to her family inside this apartment building. And you also get like this look at a woman in Iran during this time period where she can't do certain things, there's bombings. And so this movie depicts that, I think, fairly well. I mean, I don't know. But then it's also a really decent horror movie on top of that. How many other good horror movies from Iran can you name? I can name one, and I think that's it. So at the top of this video, I mentioned the sponsor, CyberGhost VPN. They've been a sponsor for a very long time because you guys just keep signing up for their service and I keep getting positive comments in the comments below about CyberGhost. I love them. I've been using them for almost a year now. Like all VPN services, they protect your web browsing, but CyberGhost also has specialized servers for Netflix in different countries, as well as some other streaming services that when you select that specific server, which you can easily switch on the fly, you then unlock Netflix in that country. For instance, if you're in the US, the UK, Germany, Australia, they all have different things available on Netflix right now as we speak. And if you're one of my international viewers and you wanna watch everything that I'm talking about in this video, you can do it right now with CyberGhost. Using the link in the description, you can pay as little as two cents 75 per month to access a lot more movies. They have a 45 day money back guarantee. So there's virtually no risk. They have great 24 seven customer support. If you need a little help getting it set up and getting it running, it's gonna work on up to seven devices simultaneously. And it's all the types of different devices that you use. Again, using the link in the description, you can pay as little as 275 a month. It's less than three bucks a month to watch way more movies than you're watching now. I love it. I know a lot of you love it, which is why they continue to sponsor the show. 
check it out, see if it's for you. But let's move on with the top 10 underrated horror movies on Netflix. The door was already open when you got there. Yeah. Then who opened it? Now, I know a lot of you will agree with this one. It Comes at Night is a very misunderstood movie. Now, when it was released, a lot of people didn't like it, despite the fact that it got very positive reviews. And I think it's because they marketed it wrong and, quite frankly, they titled it wrong. But it's very misleading and it upset a lot of people. Forget about the title and throw out any expectations that you have. This is about a family trying to survive in some sort of post-apocalyptic landscape. Now, they're in a house out in the woods. There's some sort of virus. And to be totally honest, this one may be a little too real right now at this point in history. It was not when this movie was made, but it's pretty chilling now. So prepare to get creeped the fuck out in sort of post-COVID or mid COVID America, it's terrifying. However, it's a really effective horror movie, especially when you realize what it's actually about by the end of the movie. They did a very good job with it. It's very well executed, poorly marketed, making it an ideal selection for my number 10 pick. Now, a great little hidden gem that recently got added to Netflix is Our House. This one is very odd. I'm not gonna give away too much, but it's about this kid, a scientist, who develops this machine that unknowingly basically awakens something with this machine, and it works. It sounds a little weird the way I'm describing it, but it does work in the movie, especially if you do not think about it too much. Now, this is very low budget. Some of the effects are not great, yet they're effective, they're creepy, it works. This is the type of movie that you might see at a film festival that the audience reacts really well to, but not necessarily the type of movie that would come out in a national wide release. Some of you know what I'm talking about. I liked it. I thought it started off with a good vibe. It was a little slow, similar to some of the other ones I talked about. By the time I was really into it, it was almost over. That said, I liked everything that unfolded and I thought it was different. It had a different story, a different origin for this evil thing. And I really like that element because it's kind of hard to find that in horror movies now. Everything's just being remade and retread and this felt fresh to me. I liked it. Now the most different, quote unquote different, movie on the list is Creep. Now this is actually a recommendation for Creep and Creep 2 because I think the sequel and the original go together really well. This stars Mark Duplass as this weird guy who's being documented and he's really odd. Very, very odd personality on this guy and he starts to become creepier and creepier as this found footage movie unveils itself to you. It's very simple, there's not much going on. It's one guy behind a camera and Mark Duplass's character for 90% of the movie and the same goes for the sequel, yet it's surprisingly effective. He is super creepy. I think he's really funny on a lot of shows. He's extremely creepy in this movie. I'm not sure how these movies work the way that they do, but they totally do, and I know that they have a decent little following since they've been on Netflix for quite a while now. How long do you think someone lives without water? That will not work. <laughs> you can pull till your wrists break. You're not getting out of those cuffs. Gerald's Game is another Netflix original that is based on a Stephen King book, and I think it is a fantastic Stephen King adaptation. In fact, there have been some really killer Stephen King adaptations as of late. They're doing a great job with them, and this is a great example of one. It's different than a lot of King's work, and it's a different type of movie in that it really takes place in one location for the most part. That is a very limiting element in terms of storytelling, in terms of creating a movie, but they managed to make it work. Stephen King managed to make it work with his original story, and the director here managed to really make a very compelling story 
that takes place in essentially one location. This is about a husband and wife who go on a getaway. He chains her to the bed and then proceeds to have a heart attack and falls dead on the floor within the first five minutes of the movie. And then she is there stuck, handcuffed to this bed. And as simple as that sounds, Stephen King is just such a good writer. There's so much that happens after that. It's really impressive and it's super creepy too. There's some upsetting stuff in this one. There is some sexual assault elements in this one, so beware of that, but like I said, very well executed and in terms of horror, I think it's one of the best Netflix originals that has come out. Another movie recently added to Netflix is The Girl with All the Gifts. This is based on a book by the same name. This takes place after a zombie outbreak and it's different. The zombie genre has been so well worn. They've just gone back over it again and again without much reinvention. And The Girl with All the Gifts is different. The way the zombies behave and are spread and everything is fresh and different. I liked it a lot. The thing that happens with the children in this movie is just weird. The thing I really loved about it and the reason I'm being so cryptic is it slowly reveals itself to you, but unlike some of the other ones I talked about, this one takes maybe 30 minutes really getting in and taking off and then it takes off and it keeps going and it kept me engaged throughout the whole thing. It really is a fantastic gem. If you haven't seen it yet, Put it on your watch list, check it out soon. Now Session 9 has some years on it now and it's a low budget movie, another one that's kind of like a film festival type of a thing, but it's really great. It's about this group of guys that are sent in to clean up this old asylum and by clean up I mean like get rid of asbestos and some harmful chemicals and stuff and they're there alone in this old creepy asylum that is definitely a real place. It's a fantastic setting for a horror movie and they just like get up in the guts of this building. It's really creepy. This one's very slow paced but if you find the concept interesting it's interesting from the beginning. You know, it's not necessarily creepy from the very beginning but just the initial tour of the asylum I was into this movie and it's been a long time since I've seen it and I still remember it and still feel like it's a good recommendation, which is why it's so high on this list. Now I put Priest on a recent sci-fi list. I'll put a link to that video in the description as well. but. I didn't have great things to say about it, even though I did recommend it. I basically just said it's beautiful and that's where it stops. And I rewatched it recently and I was a little bit off base because it is pretty fantastic. Now, I think it would have been amazing had it been rated R, had it had the graphic violence that is suggested to you kind of off camera throughout this entire movie because it's a violent, bloody story that's just rated PG-13, which I just always hate. It's so inappropriate to see that much violence that doesn't have any real consequences, like horrific gore. It just doesn't work for me. But this takes place way in the future, this extreme dystopian future. There's these weird vampire creatures. There's these priests that sort of keep law and order. The landscapes and the cinematography, everything's beautiful. And then it does have some decent action and it does have a pretty decent story. It just gets a little muddy because similar to Winchester, I felt like it was a little overproduced and they sort of neutered it, making it PG-13 as well. And it could have been so much better without that many more changes, which is why I have it so high. If it's been a while since you've seen it, I think you'll be surprised at how much you like it if you revisit it sometime soon. What I want you to do now is just remain calm and stay on the line with me until the police arrive. Now one that I have been talking about on this channel since one of my first horror movie lists ever is Terrifier. So I will be brief because I know longtime subscribers are sick and tired of me talking about this movie. But this is a movie for horror movie lovers. It feels very much like a B movie and it is. It's a very low budget movie but it is made to feel like an even lower budget movie than it was because that is just the vibe of this particular movie and with that they take a lot of tropes that you commonly see in these sort of gory slasher flicks which this movie definitely is and they do weird things with it and you just you feel like you're seeing something coming from a mile away 
and then they hit you from the other side. It's crazy how effective that is throughout this entire movie. That's why I love it, and that's why it is gonna be an upcoming watch party. Free, everyone on the channel, it's not a members only thing. The two lead actresses in this one, Jenna Cannell and Katherine Corcoran, are gonna join me for a live stream. I do not have a date because we've gotta work it out, but it will be announced in the community tab right here on the channel. So stay tuned for that. Maybe watch the movie first if you haven't seen it, because we're gonna be talking throughout it. They're gonna give us backstories and everything like that, but I'm super excited for that. That's gonna be the next watch party coming up here as soon as I can schedule it. Keep it slow and steady, yeah? I think I'm stuck. Just breathe with me, please. It's okay. What was that? Now, I originally thought that As Above, So Below was gonna be very similar to something like the Chernobyl Diaries. A lot of promise, not a whole lot of delivery, and I was way wrong. Whereas my complaint with the Chernobyl Diaries is that just as soon as it started to ramp up, the movie ends, that doesn't happen with As Above, So Below. It takes 20 minutes or so to kind of really get into it, but it just keeps continuing to escalate. I loved that aspect of this movie. Completely caught me by surprise. Expected total generic, just sort of nonsense. And while it is, you know, it's a horror movie, it is basically nonsense, I had a lot of fun with this one. The setting is different than your typical haunted house. You really do feel like the people in the movie cannot escape and cannot get out. It's great in that sense, and I just loved how far they took it with this one. I really strongly recommend this for anyone that has been passing on it for a long time, who maybe thought the same thing I did. We were dead wrong. And then my number one pick is The Ritual. I have not talked about this one for quite some time on the channel. Here in the US, it is a Netflix original, but this actually came out in theaters overseas, and it is a fantastic movie. It's shot really well, some of the effects are great. It is slow getting in, it's a slow buildup, but I did not mind. The juice is worth the squeeze on this one. I loved, not just the conclusion, but I loved how it developed over the course of it, and I think it's just a really well-directed, well-shot movie. And I'm surprised it doesn't have a bigger following than it has. If you've yet to watch it, it's clearly my strongest recommendation on this list. Not necessarily the best horror movie on Netflix right now, but as far as ones that are considered to be underrated, this one tops the list. Let me know in the comments below what are maybe some other underrated horror movies currently on Netflix. I'll be sure to check those out and maybe they will make a future list. But I will keep making videos like this as long as you keep watching them. Thanks for checking this video out and you will see me on the next one. I'd like to thank the Patreon supporters. They've done a great job of helping me keep the channel moving. Also, channel memberships are now available. Just another fantastic way to support the channel. Pick whichever one works best for you. There's links to all of this in the description below. But there are plenty of videos created solely because I have the support of these fine people as well as the channel members and the other Patreon supporters.